Hello and welcome once again to Agile Coaching 101 course with me, Dimitri. I'm from joinagile.com. I feel like we've met before because I assume you have watched the promo video for this course. And if you didn't, please have a look. It's only two minutes and it will give you kind of a quick overview of what we're going to be covering. Now, however, I don't feel like I'm restrained by those two minutes, recommended two minutes of a promo video, and I can actually spend some time um, maybe expanding a little bit more in terms of what are we going to be covering in this course. So let's use this time of the introduction wisely. What am I going to give you in this course? What am I going to teach you? Look, as I'm borrowing a phrase from a good colleague of mine who was my mentor, and I think it precisely describes what we're trying to achieve here, I'm going to give you just enough to make you dangerous. So it's a one-on-one course. The area of agile coaching and the, the field of knowledge is broad. It is based solely on, so on self-education and on practical experience as you start doing things. You do need an, a good entry point into this, um, into this world of agile delivery and coaching specifically because your mindset, considering that you are potentially right now a scrum master, let's say, your mindset will have to change if you are trying to embrace becoming an agile coach. We do things as coaches a little bit differently to delivery people. And I've been a delivery person long enough to know practical ins and outs of it and exactly can describe to you the shortfalls or some problems, I suppose, that I've experienced in my transitioning years. We will start by having a look at actual differences between the functional responsibilities of a scrum master or iteration manager and an agile coach. Then we'll continue with the outline of the basic coaching approach. There is sort of a methodology to all of this, and I think um, I might be the first person who will tell you about it. So some of it will be rather obvious, but some of it will hopefully be something that you will feel like, ah, it was worth my while. And if at the end of this course you can say, it was worth my while, I did learn something from this, I think that we would have achieved something here. Then there will be a section where uh, I will talk a little bit about the success criteria for the coaches and what needs to exist in the environment of the Agile coach in order to make their work successful. I think this will be both useful for coaches, like for people who are establishing themselves as an Agile coach and perhaps they're even given a little bit of a chance to request some extra help from management around, around themselves. Um, and it would be both useful for the managers. So as a manager, as a person who runs the show, as perhaps someone, a senior executive who is trying to start this Agile transformation, you are probably one of the most interested people to make sure that this transformation succeeds, right? Then I will cover in quite a great detail the typical transformation journey for a company that you all can anticipate. And by all, I mean you as a, as a delivery professional trying to become an Agile coach and you as a, as a hiring senior executive potentially or just a hiring body of the company. What can you expect? What kind of typical journey does the organization go through? How the roles and responsibilities change? Then I bet as a practical agile delivery professional, you're mostly interested in the agile coaching framework that I mentioned in the promo video, in the toolbox that I mentioned, in something that will give you something practical to do on day one and hopefully day 10 and hopefully day 60 of your transformation journey. I will be making some sort of references to external resources, which I think wouldn't hurt for you to pause the video, go and read up on it if it makes no sense to you, if, you, if it's the first time you hear about it, and then come back and continue the course. It will only help with digestion of the material of the course going further. This is not an advanced course, guys. This is not an advanced course. So yes, I said that you need to have solid Agile fundamentals, and I believe that that's all you need to have before you embark on this, on this course, on this journey but there will be some extra bodies of knowledge. For example, basics, the real basics of scaled Agile framework, SAFE, which I'm going to be using as an example of scaling, of potential scaling that you as Agile coach could be applying for your, to your organization. So I'd expect you to possibly pause the video and go and read up on SAFE. All this information is available on the web and then come back and continue listening to me talk to you. Later, we'll get to the point when we'll start discussing your team's maturing and you kind of finding your feet with the basics of being an Agile coach. So I think it would be very important for us to discuss and for you to understand how you can transition your services, your professional services as a coach to the teams, to the stakeholders, to the layers of stakeholders you have into that slightly more mature state 
where you are perhaps not 100% involved in all rituals, where you are not facilitating as much, but when you can become a little bit more of an advising, consulting body to them. I believe that we will reach a point when the discussion will come to quite a mature state of your teams and when you will start looking closely at the scaling models perhaps rather than just fundamental uh, fundamentals and then we will discuss things like WSGF for example the weighted shortest job first prioritization method from scaled agile framework we will discuss definition of done for coaches that is your success criteria because it's very important for you to be able to tangibly measure how your teams are progressing and how your services are progressing towards them, how much of you is required anymore, is your work here done or not. Language of the course is going to be quite informal as you have gathered so far, probably. I like to be personable with people, this is how I work with my teams and it has worked very well for me. So, now that the introductions are out of the way, what's next? Next, we will start talking specifically about the differences between the responsibility of a Scrum Master and Agile Coach. Like I said, some of it can be obvious, some of it will be less obvious, and yes, some of our responsibilities do overlap. I knew that too before becoming an Agile coach, but trust me, there is a little bit more to that picture. So I'll see you in actual lesson number one.